Welcome back to the Scorecast and it's Tim and Jacko here. We are doing today part one of a three part series we're going to do on how to and when to progress. So if you're not subscribed already, click the button below and then we're going to get into this week's how to. Okay, so we're going to use um, an, the example of the frog stand where for progressions around that moving into a handstand as our sort of example and applying these uh, principles of using a couple of tools in the locker, but also we're going to talk about this frog stand is an isometric or a static hold and you can apply this to any of your other holds that you're going to do like front levers, back levers uh, and look at how long we need to hold these positions before we move on and progress. So we'll get into that in a minute. Let's just give you a bit of information about the locker guys. One of the things that makes our, our training approach so effective for people, why people can learn movement so quickly, is you've got this set of tools and every good school's got a locker, right? So we, we're no, no different, we've got a locker. But rather than books being in our locker and pens, we've got some tools which are really gonna help anybody to jump in to calisthenics at any point and, uh, and make our uh, an exercise easier to progress it or to make it, sorry, to regress it or to make it more difficult to progress it. So if we can do those things effectively, anybody can train any movement at any time. So the, the different tools that we use, we have um, isometrics, eccentrics, levers and angles, we've got stability and we've got assistance. And those are the different things that we're gonna cover in this three part series. But today we're gonna look at the frog stand as Jacko says, and our focus is gonna be on levers and angles and on isometric contractions and how we're gonna look at those two different tools and enabling us to, to progress or regress and making sure that we can actually create adaptation which means we move forward to more difficult progressions of that movement. So today we're going to have a look at the, uh, the frog stand and using that to, to explore the isometric tool. It's an isometric movement and we're going to start to have a play around with understanding what's happening in an isometric and how we can maximize it. So we can use isometrics in other movements where it be pulling and pushing pull-ups or whatever but the frog stand is a perfect example of this. Basically, an isometric movement is where there's no change in muscle length, so it's a static hold position. Now, these are important for calisthenics because a lot of what we do is an isometric um, exercise in itself. So Dave just holds his frog stand there, and what we're looking for there is to, is to be able to sustain that for a certain amount of time. And that's where the question comes about, when are you ready to move to the next progression? Yeah, so th there's no real magic numbers um, with isometrics, but there is some key principles you need to understand. It's about, one thing is it's about creating tension and the time under tension. If, if we're not creating adaptation, um, so if we're not creating tension, you're not going to create an adaptation. So um, I've, someone's used a phrase with me before that I quite like is no one ever got strong falling over. So your legs aren't gonna get strong if you just fall over. The same with your frog stand. Your frog stand isn't gonna get strong if as soon as you go into that position, you fall out of it after half a second or yeah. one second. Um, so, but there being saying that, there isn't, there's no magic number, but we'd like to say somewhere between like five and, or 10 seconds really is, is a nice guideline for you. Um, what from, from us, what's really important in that is that you know when you're ready to progress, you've got to earn that right to progress. And when you feel comfortable in that, th in that progression, um, and that's going to be around somewhere around 10 seconds. But if you feel comfortable after eight, like, and you, you're ready to go, then yeah, like, mm. you, and you're soon going to find out when you try the next progression whether you've built up enough strength or not. Because you go to the next progression and just fall down, then you're going you're going to need to use some of these tools we're going to show you in yeah. a second to help bridge those gaps. So, Jacko, show us the next progression, which is going to be knee off, and then we're going to show you two ways that we can use the, the tools in the locker to be able to play around with this and go backwards and forwards, regress or progress. Yeah, so so I've normally, got, our, yeah. our frog stand progression will be here. So we're nice we stay we can hold that for say 10 seconds or so we feel like we've got control of movement the next thing for, to do is for Jacko to take a knee off now this takes a little bit more preparation we have to get ready to take the to, to move that leg we have to fire the shoulders up create some stability in the chain because effectively we're reducing the amount of support that we're, the, the body's being provided so we have to recreate that somewhere else because we're not able to just rest on that leg anymore so to use the tools from the locker this is an isometric in itself but we're going to use an assistance tool as well and what I'm going to get Jacko to do is go into that same position when he takes that leg off he can just use that one foot to dab the toe on the ground to give himself a little bit of support so it's less weight than having the hot the knee just hanging free off the ground but it's still a progression moving forwards using that assistance tool of making it a little bit more difficult and moving in the direction so why don't you show us that so you can see a little bit 
So he goes yeah. back into a frog stand, hips are nice and high. This leg's gonna come off, and then he's just gonna start to dab that toe on the floor a little bit on the left leg as this knee comes into that hang position. You can just play around with how much force you're putting down to that stance leg, or the, the left leg on this case, as to how difficult or how easy you wanna make this, but it's starting to give you a feel. If you can just literally just dab that down super gently of where you're gonna to have to recreate that base of support when you take the knee off the elbow. I think we'll cover a, a, a couple of things that are really important to make sure you don't do on this, just to highlight, is um, the reason would be if I take this leg off and my hip drops down and I just fall, you know that that's just too difficult for you. I've not mm. created any tension, I'm just falling down. The other thing is then, so you go to put your foot down, when I take this leg off, does my hip stay in the same position or do I put this foot down, rely on it, let that hip drop down, I'm just really, I can actually take my hand off the floor <laughs> and then put it back on, then I'm just kidding myself that I'm not actually, I'm using that assistance tool, that other foot, way too much. So the real key of these progressions for, the, uh, for those frog stands, why Tim's so good at those, is it's having those hips set on top of the knee, on top of the elbow, on top of the hand uh, and the wrist stacked, and that when you take one of those legs off, that hip position doesn't move backwards. Yeah. We use this phrase about our, our approach to calisthenics, we're always looking to create a stable foundation from which we can move to the next progression. In that frog stand, the stable foundation is a hip staying high. That means that we can then move to the next progression. If we're not stable there and the hips drop down straight away, we've lost that base, that, that, that stable foundation, and we're kind of like, we're really gonna find it quite difficult to progress and move forwards. So that's a great example of the assistance tool, just using the toe to move forwards. Again, there's no magic number. It really comes down to where you feel comfortable and confident to start to move around. Yeah. But you want to feel like you've nailed that frog stand down for a decent amount of time first. And it is a really nice one for bridging that gap between, I've got comes from a frog stand now, and maybe I can move around a bit, but when I take that leg off, or I can't even take that leg off, or when I do it, just falls straight back yeah. down. That's a quite a common one, because it's, it's, a, it's a progression if you've got a certain amount of strength, but it can be quite a big step sometimes people so just using that toe down just dabbing it just really helps bridge that gap for a lot of people yeah and the last thing in all of these the frog stands you've got to keep pushing we don't forget that we're doing an isometric movement in itself and that requires us to be providing or producing maximal force into the ground we don't want to just be like resting on the hands even with all of these progressions you should be literally pushing down as hard as you can for the duration yeah. that's going to mean that it's, it shortens the amount of time you can do it for but it, we have to do that if we're going to start to encourage the strength development because that's where most people are going to be limited when they start to try and progress they're just not strong enough yeah. in here and we can make sure we're training that by pushing into the ground hard all the time yeah let's look at this the next one levers and angles so if we're going to move uh, if we're going to change the lever length or the angle that we're training at it's going to make an exercise easier or more difficult so an example might be a tuck human flag with the knees bent rather than the straight leg uh, fully out on the same with a planche but the frog stand we can apply a really nice progression to if we're struggling to take both knees off yeah, so, we that, to, Dave. Yeah, so we might get to the point where you can take one off and you're happy hips don't move but when you try and take both off we lose it so we need a halfway house in between there so we can actually take the single leg variation but rather than having both my knees tucked in which is actually going to put quite a lot of weight in we can extend the lever length to make one of these slight one of these legs longer so Dave's going to just extend one leg out and whilst it actually looks like in, in some terms making a lever longer would be, would be a progression make it more difficult but in this case it's actually just distributing force wider over the base of support so it's lengthening the lever but it's providing a bit more of a seesaw effect which makes the balance easier having both of those knees tucked in in a small tuck tight but it's offensive like a yeah. tuck position puts a low demand on the shoulders because you're having to hold a lot of weight in yeah. a very yeah. short space you're holding both the legs off your knees whereas on with that one leg out straight yes the lever length challenges you but you've still got one leg yeah. on your elbow and so that's what makes it a nice little progression for you to or a little stepping stone or bridge to being able to take two off i'm a little bit out of breath you see them, <laughs> yeah. not, they're not they're not that easy um so that's a real simple example of our levers and angles we're changing the lever length to play around with the difficulty to progress an exercise in that case again the height that you're going to move that to can 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 affect how difficult it is whether it's lowering or planche or higher into more of a handstand position so again 
play around with it, see what works for you. You're ultimately trying to find points where you can hold a progression maximally for about 10 seconds. Yeah. For reps and sets turns, if you can start to find that, that progression where you're about 10 seconds and you can do four to six sets of those, you're really starting to rack up some good time on attention. That's gonna be the major kind of nuts and bolts moving forward. The exercise is one thing, but the, the amount of time that you can actually stimulate that maximal tension isometric yeah. hold is gonna be the key. Yeah, and have, making sure you give yourself a decent bit of rest, so like a couple of minutes rest in between those maximal effort, and there needs to be maximal effort, um, to create that adaptation, that's going to help you build up that sort of really specific, or we would call applied strength for your frogs, eventually going to turn those rotating up then into those handstands. Great. So, that's it for this week's how-to. Yep. Um, Dave, right. you have to do this. Yeah, <laughs> the how-to is. So, uh, that was part one. Keep an eye out for part two and three. But if you haven't subscribed, click up there by my head. If you haven't got a free guide, I know loads of you follow us, but you actually haven't downloaded the free guide yet. So make sure you get that there. That's actually free video tutorials to help you get started. And then if for one of our other uh, how-tos, check up there. So until next week. Class dismissed.